After returning to King's Landing, Raven Kiltiger fell in with the Lords, and of the King, Tywin Lannister, no less. It would seem that the war was taking him further from his post than he liked, and in his stead, his son Tyrion was left with the responsibilities of the Hand. Rumors of further rebellion were stirring in the Crown Lands, and the Lannisters were determined to snuff it out. Sir Geoffrey Dark of House Dark was moving against the King. Rhaewyn and her band were dispatched to remove this threat. They were successful. Sir Geoffrey Dark and his followers were left dead that day. Word of who had committed the deed remained secret for now, but the death of a lord sent shockwaves throughout the others. Had the Lannisters' desired effect, to reward Rhaewyn for her service, she was gifted an old rusty set of plate, once worn by Aemon One-Eyed Targaryen. The armor was damaged, yet still sturdy. Donning the armor, her men took to calling her the Iron Crab, a name that would stick. For now, word of a tournament stirs in King's Landing, and with the Hand's blessing, this Iron Crab will enter. But you don't truly think that the Hound will be there? Surely he's off fighting? That is a possibility, Alan. But we will have to consider, yes, the Lords are fighting, but a tournament, even a small tournament, is one that's not easily turned down. We could do a lot with that coin. Aye, that's true. But st still, you're not worried they won't start asking questions? Remember, I will not be there as Raven Keltiger. I'll be the Iron Crab. Nothing like a little bit of mystery to keep them intrigued. Do you really think that will work? Well, we won't know until we try. I can only attain so much renown before questions start to arise. The longer we have until my father forces my hand, the better. And so, for now, Raymond Keltica will remain the Iron Crab. If you're certain that's the best course of action, Bryden has advised. I know what Bryden has advised, Alan, but he's not the one that will be getting slapped around the head, is he? No. Look. It'll be fine. It's a chance to earn more favor. Favor with a very powerful house. Right now, the Lannisters are on top. And, while they are, we'll take them for all the gold they're worth. Aye, my lady. All right. Well, help me secure this helmet. It's not long till sunrise. They will be preparing. And so must we. Kia ora, guys, gals, and legionnaires. Rykon here, and welcome back to Raywind's Tale. It is now the morning. We are at a very foggy King's Landing, ready for a melee. Now, I've tried to prepare myself and prepare Raymond as best as possible for this melee. We have made a small purchase in between episodes, purchasing a war mace. Something that might potentially help us with heavily armored opponents. Our shield is not a great shield. If we could get a different shield, that could protect us a little bit better. I would be super happy with that. However, I don't think we're going to be able to pick up anything that's really going to save us in this. I mean, the the actual health of this thing isn't all that bad, but shields really just don't hold up all that well to a lot of uh, damage. So this is essentially the one that we're using at the moment, this Pavis. Pavis? Pavis? Yeah. Are we ready? As ready as it will ever be, Robin. As ready as will ever be. Let us visit the melee grounds. We can see that the grounds of the Red Keep have been fitted to accommodate a small melee. Let us enter. What awaits us? A nice view of the harbour and our weapons at the ready. I don't think we're going to need our pole arm today. Oh, and quite the setup. How very nice. If this is the melee grounds, it's a very enclosed space to be fighting in, but still. I like the look at the rest of uh, King's Landing. We're just getting a glimpse at from here. 
So yes, this thing here, I imagine, could assist us a great deal in the coming fight. So much so that it might be worth us making that our main weapon effectively at this point. So that we're more than likely going to draw that first. We'll see. You're the steward. Let's have ourselves a chat. Uh, yes, can I help you? Uh, when exactly does the melee start? As soon as I imagine. H hard to say, really. The king does as he pleases, and the rest of us obey. If he wants to attend the melee, he will, and as soon as he attends, we start. So there's no telling when it will begin, then? Well, I've been told that it will be today, but then again, I was told the same thing yesterday. But everything's ready, just as it was yesterday. And the kitchen winch has got a belly full of good food yesterday. We had to throw it all out. Hmm. Well, I'll just wait then, and eat in time. As you please. The heralds will blow the trumpets when the king arrives. Very well. I shall wait. And wait we will. But we're going to make a small alteration while we are waiting. We're going to jump into here, and we're going to remove this name, changing it out instead for the Iron Crab. There we are, and we might as well go put those other points into our one-handed skill. Now we're ready as we will ever be, and I suppose we are just waiting. Can we speak with you, Gold Cloaks? No. No, we cannot, and we won't be able to walk out this way, so we are just waiting. So I suppose we'll take a seat. That's a lot of a lot of gold cloaks along the wall. Damn. Yep, we'll just wait here, and I will see if I can leave. That starts it. Good. Okay. At last, the king arrives. Joffrey and his younger siblings, Mycella and Tommen, take a seat, accompanied by the Queen Regent, Cersei Lannister. The court, amongst them the lords of the small council, take their seats. Despite the exalted company, the participants are a paltry lot, though a few fine knights are amongst them, including the Knights of the King's Guard. You decide to ready your gear. Your first opponent is Morris Slint the son of the former commander of the Gold Cloaks, a fat youth, newly given the position of squire. He holds his sword as if it's the first time he's been given a weapon. Joffrey nods, and a hero blows a trumpet, the signal to fight. You tighten the grip on your weapon, and we charge. Morris Slint, it is your time to fall. Okay, back up. Here we go. Decent damage. Okay, there we go. That's what we're talking about. And they are all there. Hello. Ten renown. We'll take it. And our quest log has been updated. With Morris Slint defeated, you retire to refresh yourself. Soon, however, the heralds call your name, and you get ready for another fight. This time, your opponent is Sir Balon Swan from his fight against Sir Hober Redwine, a large man with a broad chest and arms thick with muscle. He's carrying a large mace. He nods towards you, smiling. We charge. A large mace does not sound good. Not one bit. Okay, you look a lot more prepared for this. I'm not so happy about that. We'll block what we can. Surely we've got to be doing something here. Oh, yes! Take it. <laughs> uh, I'd love to be able to take that mace. Oh, our shield was nearly completely gone there. I don't think they expected us to win that as the crowd cheers our name. Word of the Iron Crab <laughs> spreads among them. Oh. Sir Balin is lifted off the ground, his nose bloodied but otherwise unfazed. Your throat is parched, but soon the heralds call your name again. This time it's not your name the crowd cheers, but that of Sir Horace Redwine, the handsome son 
of Lord Pexter Redwine. With a bright smile, he throws a crown of flowers to the closest maiden, and then immediately charges you. Oh dear, right. Let's try to hold our ground. Charge. Here we go. Alright, you got a shield as well? That's fine. We'll pick our moments. As best we can. Like that. And hell yes! Get down, red wine. And how is that? My liege. Sir Horace. A crowd favourite, it would seem. Sir Horace gets to his feet a bit unsteady, but appears to have suffered no more injuries than those to his dignity. Throwing you a withering glance, he saunters off the field. While stretching your legs, he watches the next fight between Sandor Clegane, the Hound, and a knight wearing silver griffins on a blue field. The Hound makes quick work of his opponent, and soon the Herald calls your name again. This time, your opponent is a free rider in the service of Lord Baelish, by the name of Lothar Brune. He tightens the grip on his sword. Well, we've seen the Hound is here, the Hound is fighting, and we're starting to get into the more proficient fighters. Lothar Brune. Okay, Lothar. I like that you don't have too much of a helmet on. We can make use of that. We certainly can. Oh, wow. Oh my god. We need to hold. We need to hold. No health. We've got nothing left. Oh, we got through on the skin of our teeth. And that was from a stab. That was a very very efficient fighter. That blade nearly pierced our heart there. We've gained a fair bit of renown at this stage. <clears throat> okay, with Lothor Brune unconscious, you retire to the serving table. As you chug a large jug of ale, you notice the remaining competitors doing the same. All that remains is Sir Harold of the Silver Griffins, Sir Mandon Moore, and Sandor Clegane. When you enter the field, you see Sir Harold opposite you, a bored-looking man. He grips his sword comfortably. This is a man that has not been tested yet. The Silver Griffins. We might have met our match. There are three other competitors left, including, well, not including us. That's two more matches before the Hound, as I am sure the Hound is getting to the final. We've made it this far. Let's continue. Ready yourself, Rewin. As ready as can be. Block. Okay, we got a strike in. A good strike. His head is semi-visible. Oh, and he's down. He's down. A few good shots to the head. A dodge to the side. And we are okay. As okay as can be. Sir Harold quickly regains his feet and leaves the grounds. The next fight is Sandor Clegane and Mandon Moore. A hard fought and brutal fight. In the end, the Hound prevails. <laughs> Soon, the Heralds blow the trumpets and the last fight of the day begins. The Hound is sweating, but still fresh and looks confident. We grip our weapon. The Iron Crab Raywin Keltiga, this is Sandor Clegane. This is a, this is Sandor that has fought through a number of people along with Raywin. Let's see how we fare. Stand your ground, Raywin. Stand your ground. Oh, he's got a mighty big sword and that helm. Okay, try and block. Okay, that's an oh, all right strike. We're not doing a lot of damage. And and come on. <laughs> And <laughs> we are down. Wow. That was some ferocity right there. Well, we lost Renown at the end. Defeated, but defeated by the Hound. We managed to stand, you know, a good few attacks there. He completely sundered our shield in half and then very quickly took us down. He was swinging that two-handed blade like it was a dagger. That man has some strength. Well, if we are to be beaten, to be beaten by the Hound is a fate that I think we can live with. 
We've been eliminated from the melee. The tournament is over. Let's go ahead and check in on the notes here and just see. It is, uh, well, that's that. We did adequately, however, defeating the Hound in combat was not going to be something that we could easily achieve. We're lucky to be still on our feet after that, getting whisked away before too many questions could be asked. Now we could return to the Tower of the Hand to see if there's anything else that Tyrion needs of us. But first, I think we need to rest up. We are injured after that fight. The rest of our men are looking okay, but we could certainly do with a bit of a rest. Unfortunately, we didn't get those 10,000 coins. They went to Sandor, but I feel like he deserved it. He fought through honorably and defeated us. That was some amazing skill with that blade. And I think that's just going to further increase Raywin's desire to become a better swordsman. To become more like the Hound. <laughs> Let's go to the marketplace. I think we're going to have to pick up a little bit of extra food. Because our smoked fish is starting to get towards its end. We've got these bags of grain, but they're not the most enticing things in the world. I feel like after a tournament like that, we could pick up something like pork. However, I'm just a bit concerned with it just going off. I'd like us to consume that first, but I don't know if we're going to. You know what? Screw it. We've got enough funds. Let's make it happen. There we go. I'm actually going to swap these back around. As we do prefer the sword, I think in tournaments, having something that can crack through armor is going to make a bit of a difference. But you can see, we had some good hits on the Hound there, and we were doing 10 to 15 damage, so that is some solid armor. And another thing to note, with our armor, it's not actually all that great when it comes to heavy armor. We can see that this thick cuirass over here, which actually isn't all that expensive, is a lot better than the heavy plates that we currently have. And once you start going up further, it gets a lot more expensive. Looking at this, this isn't actually too bad of an investment, really. And the interesting thing about this as well is that it doesn't actually affect your power draw. So you could still effectively use a bow with this armor. I'm half tempted to pick up a thick cuirass here. However, it is going to be a Lannister cuirass, which I don't know how we feel about that. That actually looks like it's the armor of the gold cloaks. Hmm. I don't think we want to spend 4,000. We do need to remember that we actually want to try and invest this money elsewhere, but this could increase our survivability by a lot, especially when it comes to tournaments. It's not that bad, really. 1770. We could do that. It'd be possible. And then we could pass on some pieces of this armor to others amongst us yes that is proper heavy armor mm. you know what we're gonna stick with what we've got for now i'm happy i'm gonna be content with it but i think what i want to do is also talk to the guild masters here see if there's anything else that we can do because if we can improve our standing here we can set up a business in king's landing which i feel like feel like we'd be looking pretty good if we were able to achieve that. Let's go meet with the Guildmaster and see if there's anything that we can do for them. Unfortunately, going this time around, we weren't able to do any missions in King's Landing yet. So let's see if Guildmaster Roger here has anything that we can do for him. Hmm. Taking cattle. Unfortunately, we aren't wanting to do distant travel. I don't suppose we could attempt to buy something here, though. Well... I guess we have enough reputation that he is willing to consider us starting a business here. So, I'm going to go through. I'm going to see what I can find as the most efficient business for us to have here. And we'll go from there. Funnily enough, an Ironworks is the most efficient out of all of these. For 3,500, we'd be making a profit of 200 coins per week. It's not massive, but that will start to accumulate after a while. Even looking at doing something like Velvet here, the profit isn't all that great. Yes, it's double the amount, but the investment is a lot higher. Yeah, it's really not economical. I don't think starting a business here is actually economical at all. Not now. We can see that it's opulent and crowded, so it's doing okay. It's just 
it's not the right time for us to start a business here, I think. For now, we are going to go visit the Tower of the Hand. All is the same. Let us walk inside and see if we can have a meeting with the imp. Hello, Tyrion. Yes, Raven Keltike. Um, might I have the pleasure of knowing a little bit more about you, my lord? Well, I am Tyrion Lannister, and of the king. And, yes, that is it. And I'm assuming that's all that we can do for you right now, Tyrion. Yes. Well, we'll move on for now. We will take our leave. And we'll rest here for a time. We do need to recover. So, Raymond, sleep the day away. It is the morning of the day afterwards. And our party is looking a lot happier. Everyone is looking pretty good, all things considered. Alan... You're looking all right. Kargyle, you're also doing absolutely fine. We're good to go. We are good to continue. Now, looking at our notes, the quests that we have available to us, well, it looks like we are due to be heading up and towards the Vale. There is another tournament that will be happening at the Nine Stars. However, I feel like we'd want to really be prepared for that tournament. Just after how this one went, I think we did very good at considering who we were fighting against. But now you can see that we are once again Raywin Keltiger, still known as the Iron Crab to many. I'd like to think the people of King's Landing won't forget so quickly that this much smaller fighter took on the very large hound and stood up to at least a few of those attacks. I'm tempted to ride on towards Duskendale and see about creating a business here. We are close to home, perhaps a little too close for comfort let's see if we can chicken about businesses over here all right guildmaster let's see if there's anything we can do for you first of all general quests that are going to keep us close at hand would be nice however oh i was worried that we might be getting assaulted but no i think we're going to be okay here let us see this war between the Westerlands and the Riverlands has brought our town on the verge of ruin. Our caravans get raided before they can reach their destination. Our merchants are afraid to leave the safety of the town walls. And if those aren't enough, the taxes to maintain the war take away the last bits of our savings. If peace does not come soon, we will not hold for much longer. That is true. But who can stop this madness? You can stop war. There have been attempts to reconcile the two sides and reach a settlement. However, there are powerful lords on both sides whose interests lie in continuing this war. Men urge all others not to heed the word of sensible men, but to keep fighting. While these leaders remain influential, no peace settlement can be reached. Well, who exactly is blocking the way of peace? Mm. Lord Selwyn Staxpear and Carol Vance from the Riverlands. And if they change their mind or lose influence, there'll be no chance of having peace between the two sides. It is a bit of a shame, then, that nothing can be done. There is a way to resolve the issue. A particularly determined person can perhaps persuade one or both these lords to accept making peace. Even if that fails, it can be possible to see if these lords are defeated by force and taken prisoner. If they're captive, they'll lose their influence. What do you think? Can you do it? Hmm. It is difficult, and perhaps too difficult. War is a troubling time. Some will fall, others will rise. For now, this is not my fight. I wish you all the best. Master Eldon. Most of the merchants in this town will gladly open up their purses to support such a plan. We can collect 12,000 between ourselves. That is tempting. However, as I said, bringing this war to an end is not so easily done, and not done by me. I'm not your woman. Don't say no right away. Think about it for some time. If there's someone that can manage, it's you. Hmm. That is an interesting proposition. 
but one in which I don't think we'll be seeking. Now is the perfect time for Raywin to be making a move here in Westeros, to be gaining influence, to be gaining coin, to be gaining power. Something that's not easy to come by. But here, well, here, it might just be possible. We will take our leave for now, and we need to start heading up and towards the Vale. First of all, to a sept, a sept in the northwest of the Vale. This being the sept in question, one would think. There are other septs throughout the Vale, but they're a lot further away. We can see that Nine Stars is up here as well. The place where this next tournament will be taking place. A tournament in which I don't think we want to take place just yet. But who knows? We are going to start the long run up towards there. And we'll see if we can visit some of the places along the way. There are a number of towns on the way up there. And we will be spreading the word of the Iron Crab, the Slayer of the White, and, well, the Combatant of the Hound. Our legend is growing, slowly but surely. While traveling along the King's Road, we have encountered some broken men attacking a Riverland's caravan. However, these broken men, interestingly enough, are made up of Westerland troops and Northern troops, both sides of the war, fighting together to try and take down this caravan. However, we don't want that to happen. We'll see if we can save this caravan and see if we can fight off these troops at the same time. Alone, they would outnumber us, but with the caravan assisting, we stand a much better chance. Let's rush the aid and see if we can make the difference here. It's going to be 35 against 16 in our favor, and the terrain is in our favor as well. We're going to go ahead and hold up here, if possible, infantry going further down the hill. Not all the way down, but... Uh, a decent ways where possible. It looks like our archers already have a shot. We have one horseman. So we'll have you off towards the side. And archers, let's get you to go ahead and spread out. Get a wider arc of those arrows. And we'll hold here with our infantrymen. Hoping to be able to get some of them before they reach us. Now, it might get a little confusing because there are Westerland troops there and we also have Westerland troops. Yeah. It's the kind of battle where having our banners up will actually make a difference, and I'm glad to see that we actually have a banner over there, which is pretty cool. We're going to hold the line as best we can, waiting for a moment, and then sending that cavalryman, that lone horseman there, to go see if they can make a bit of a difference. We'll see if we can open this thing up with an attack. They're backing off. They're kind of being a little smart. Well, that was over fast for you. The rest of you hold. And we'll move in once we get a chance. All right, move in. The rest of you. Thank you. Looks like we're going to be... Well, maybe not alone. You're all by yourself now. Done. All right. Those two are our own. You're a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> it does get a little confusing. Okay. Yep, they're running down now. Nice, good shot from the archer. In those scenarios, having our own flags on will make a massive, massive difference. Hopefully, not a very costly one for us. We did get two of our Lethys wounded, but that's given them a lot of experience at the same time. Good job, team. Good job. We have the Renown, and we also have the thank of the... Cataverneer. They did have some uh, troops with them. Northern Spearmen and Northern Vanguard. We'll go ahead and hire them on. Increase our ranks by a little bit here. And we can see that Alan actually did uh, level up from that. We're going to go ahead and share the loot with our men. There isn't a, much in the way of loot at all. But we'll accept it all the same. And we do have others to level up here. We're going to go for Men at Arms. I feel like we have enough Longbowmen at this stage. We want to keep our infantry line up a fair amount. Now, as for Cargyle, let's talk about your skills. We need to increase your strength even further. And I think it's time for you to really get that power strike up. Good that you have as much Iron Flesh as you do, but uh, we just want to see that improving all the time where possible. And at this point here, we ride on towards the Sept. We're going to stop off at Fogfield along the way. Actually, seven streams first. 
to spread word of ourselves, to introduce ourselves to the elders as we do ride on through. And I think we have actually talked to these ones already. Fogfield, we might have already had a conversation, but we'll double check that. The caravans for now are safe. And no, we have not met you here. Fantastic. Well, we'll take that and then ride on towards the Sept through these foggy woods. And we actually have a decent number of broken men coming out towards mm, this caravan. Those numbers are a little bit more than what we'd want to be fighting ourselves. However, we can outpace them. The caravan should be able to as well, making it to the twins and us making it to the Sept. We arrive at a lonely septuary in the most remote part of the Vale, where the waters of the Neck dissipate. The countryside is barren and windswept, and only a few poor peasants make their home here, this close to the mountains. Let us visit the Sept, see what awaits us. Hello, good sir. We've got a really nice sunset in the distance. Yes, must be. Sept and Stefan, let's have a conversation. Ah, uh, blessings to you, my good man. The Father above is all the protection you need. Lay down your weapons and rejoice in his holy light. I'm actually looking for a book. I was hoping you might be able to assist me. What book? The Mysteries of the Worm? Never heard of it. Only book a godly man needs is a seven-pointed star. Everything else is just worldly knowledge, soon to be forgotten. Why waste your time with books about plants, when you could show your devotion to the Seven instead? Uh, so you haven't heard anything about a book? It's meant to be rather rare. I haven't heard anything of much lately. This is a remote corner of the world, my little place of worship. The small folk around here are simple, with simple needs and simple dreams. So, do you know of anyone in the area that might have knowledge of these books? can't say I do, though perhaps Sir Elston has heard something. His hold or is to the east of here, close to the foot of the mountains. We're very isolated here, but if anyone had heard anything about books, it's either Sir Elston or his maester. Well, thank you for your help all the same. Good Septon, let's leave the Sept behind and continue eastwards to hold fast. That doesn't look ominous at all. No, not in the slightest. To hold fast then. Just through some woods, along the side of the vale, as evening falls, we arrive at Holdfast. As we can see, the structure is ancient, perched on top of a looming hill, overlooking a minor village. The villagers eye us suddenly as we pass on by, many of them looking oddly alike, until we realize that many of them are probably related. The air is somehow thick, and in the distance you can almost make out an old forest. The trees are tall and gnarled, reaching for the sky. Let us enter Holdfast. It's very dark in here, but we are not alone. Sir Elston Boone. Well, Sir Elston? Terrible weather, isn't it? It feels sour. Something's wrong with it. Um, what do you mean? This whole place is wrong. Should have stayed on the road. I never wanted any of this. I'm Sir Elston Boone, the last of House Boone, stuck here. Last boon stuck. Inherited these holdings from a distant cousin last year. Used to be a tawny knight. What a life. Riding from town to town. Not a care in the world. Now I'm... I'm shackled to this place. Um... I'm looking for a book. I don't suppose you might be able to help. Or if I could consult with your maester? The Mysteries of the Worm. Hmm... <laughs> I can see from your reaction that that's the one. Cadwin has not been talking about anything else for weeks. Found it mentioned in some old papers, left behind by one of my ancestors. Mentioned something about which isle and the upcliffs. 
Cadwin was sure that he could figure out where the book was. Wait, did you hear that? Something in the walls. Perhaps it's just rats, but they'd have to be monstrous. That's too loud a sound. Uh, um, <clears throat> perhaps I could instead talk to your maester? Maester Cadburn, was it? I'm afraid not, Raven Keltiger. And why is that? He killed himself two days ago. Cut his own throat. It was a bad way to go. It's this, it's this sour air. It turns everyone mad. He rambled for days, you know, shouting about the long night, about great white spiders and whites walking up and down a wall. His trip to the Barrow changed him. Should never visit Barrows. Raven Keltiger, the dead sleep better when they're not disturbed. Well, thank you, Sir Elston. That shall be all for now. Yes, let's leave. And that's bizarre in and of itself. We have roots growing down in through the ceiling. This place is, well, somewhat abandoned. And from here, we can see off in the distance a barrow. And well, it's the evening and we'd probably reach there by midnight should we leave. And perhaps that is worthwhile. Now, there were some places that were mentioned, names of places and I don't see any of them around here specifically which isle hmm unless we're talking much further afield that is an interesting one to say the least hmm yeah we don't see anything in particular not on the maps that we have within our position Perhaps this is a mystery that will remain just that, a mystery. But we will ride on towards the barrow to see what we can find. Traveling through the woods and past ominous looking structures, we reach the stone circle at midnight. Our journey to the barrow was harrowing. The ground in the area is squishy, watery, and smells rotten. Vapors seep from the trees, many of them fallen over or molding. Wildlife is almost non-existent, except for a few rats scurrying across our path. The barrow rises ahead of us, a cluster of stones on top of a hill. Though much of the area is submerged in water, the air is putrid, filled with miasmas and all kinds of foul smells, and thick, somehow thick. Let us investigate the barrow. And... Ooh, 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 okay, we have a figure. You two stay close to me. We're running off. And who exactly are you? Well, you're screaming, and I don't like that. Oh, not a good time to stumble. Lock what we can. He's down. Thank you, Alan and Alan. The two Alans. I actually think that our other Alan might be Aelin. Aelin? Aelin. Aelin and Alan. Yes, Mr. Cargyle works just as well. We are victorious, and we will leave for now. Well, we didn't actually get a chance to investigate the barrow, and it seems that we, yeah, we don't have a chance to investigate the barrow. Well, let's see. Lost knowledge. Return to Melko. Malco back in King's Landing. So that's it then. We've just given up. Or we've reached a dead end. Unable to find anything in the burrow. Let's head back towards Holdfast. And we'll visit the Sept on the way back as well. To see if we can discover anything else. We'll speed along towards it. And we can't even enter the Holdfast. Well, what about the Sept? Dawn has reached us. And the sept is the same. Hmm. Interesting. Well, it's not too long of a ride all the way back down to King's Landing. We'll see if we can find any encounters along the way. But we'll start making our way out there now. Hmm. Interesting. A dead end, it would seem, for the time being.
While riding back, we come across the Crossroads Inn, somewhere that I thought we might have been to so far, but it was in fact a different inn. This one, however, doesn't seem to be faring any better at all. A grim sight out front awaiting us. Hmm. Not good. The corpse in the gibbet above your head appears to have been there for quite some time. Bird droppings are everywhere, and small scrapes of meat are still hanging on the corpse. The crows must have been at it. Hmm. Not a good sign. But it has been like that for some time, though. These flames, they're recent, though. We'll see what remains, what we can find out about this place. The burned down dwelling appears to have been destroyed recently, with smoke and small fires still coming from the woodwork. And we have smoke filtering out from the inn itself. We'll see if there's any way in to the inn. Seemingly no. Carrying on around the side. The inn appears to have been abandoned, the doors are locked, and no noise can be heard from inside. The surrounding area is trodden down, and the evidence of a gathering of men and horses is seen here. We have successfully explored the Crossroads Inn. There is nothing else for us to see here. But there was a large group here that, well, took this place apart, it would seem. There is no one else here now. We should pass on, leave this place behind. It is an ill omen. And speaking of ill omens, we have Lord Harrowy's town along the way, another location that we haven't fully explored yet. But before we do, I think we might actually head out towards Saltpans. It is a larger city, a large town that we haven't been to yet. I feel like it'll be worth it, if for nothing else than visiting the tavern. And we have arrived. We can see the banner of Sir Quincy Cox of the Riverlands. And there is actually a melee taking place here at the moment. Now that is interesting. We have fought in one so far. Perhaps we could fight in another. It is certainly tempting. Let's start off by having a walk around the streets. Let's get a feel for the salt pans, first of all. It is a decently sized town with a pretty all right village over on the side. Yeah, not a bad fortification. No doubt the river just being beyond there. Let's go to that tavern first and see if we have any interesting folk to speak to here. We have a Sir Jasper Rivers hmm. and some free riders. Well, Jasper, let's have a word. Yes? Keep your distance, by the way. My apologies. Might I know who I'm speaking to? You have the honor of speaking to Sir Jasper's Rivers, son of Sir Steverin Frey, trueborn son of Lord Walder Frey, the Lord of the Crossing. My father has sent me out to gain experience in the service of a master other than my Lord Grandfather, that I may increase the honor of my house, or so my brother Ryman told me. I have served as a sworn sword to Lord Royce Coldwater of Coldwater, and Lord Damon Marbrand, the Lord of Ashmark. I serve under his son Sir Adam Marbrand in the field, though we did not see much action. I have distinguished myself in tournaments, but since the outbreak of war, my loyalties have been called into question. My father being a true-born son of Walder Frey, I was honorably discharged. So, as you can see, I am no more than a hedge knight. Hmm. Well, you might enjoy the company of my men, bastard-born as they are, as am I. My name is Raven Waters. By birth, not by choice. Hmm. Would you consider joining us? I might join you. I would need to be assured that you will not force me to chatter with the low-born men of your company. I am, after all, a knight, 
and the son of a Frey, you, the daughter of a Celtiger, you I can listen to. I imagine that the brutes and the thieves of your company will even find that my presence might better their behavior, and I am sure that your men will fight with even more valor, being in the presence of an anointed knight. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps. We'll see how you fare in battle, first of all, Sir Jasper. I welcome you to our company, then, Sir Jasper Rivers, son of Sir Steverin Frey, son of... Lord Walder Frey, the Lord of the Crossing. Quite good, then. I should ask a small token in return. Five hundred silver, just a knightly formality. Silly old tradition hardly worth mentioning. <laughs> of course, five hundred is next to nothing. Here, for your tradition. Good, uh, just allow me a moment to prepare, and then I'll be ready to move on. Welcome. Hmm. Interesting. A little pompous, perhaps, for some of our sorts, but someone that will be able to use in the front line. We accept another bastard, albeit a bastard with a very high opinion of themselves. Well, not like we know anyone like that, though, right? Let's head upstairs and see if there's anyone else of interest here. You seem to be enjoying your ale? No, it appears that the rooms are empty. And so with that... Well, perhaps we will prepare for this tournament, and we might even get a chance to see how this Rivers fights. Let's go to the marketplace first of all, and just see what they have on offer here. We have looked at armor in some other places, and we've got heavy lamellier armor here. It's not that much better than our own. Really, the armor that we were looking at back in King's Landing was, was decent for the price. We've got battered full plate, and oh my gosh, it is, it's expensive, it is quite the investment, but really, I feel like we have an okay set of armor here, however, we can fall quite quickly in battle. Let's have a look at the arms here, see if they have any better shields. Now, we would have to have shield 3 to be able to use that, and it is ungodly expensive for us at this stage, so no, we will not be <laughs> attempting that. I do like our our shield. I think we'll stick with it for now. It can be broken, as we've seen, very easy in combat, but yeah, we'll see We'll see what we can do. We're going to head back, and we are going to join the melee, for better or for worse. We can see that the town is hosting a melee, a contest designed to test the middle of warriors in one-on-one -on -one battle. We will join once again as the Iron Crab. Okay, right. We can see that our next opponent is going to be Sir Quincy Cox. Fantastic. Well, he's a little older. Perhaps he'll be a little slower. We'll see how he does. We are going to place a bet on ourselves, but I don't think we're going to go for a massive bet. Our odds are 13 to 1. Let's go ahead and bet 100 coins here. Yeah, 1300 dinar. That's decent. Winning the tournament would be, well, it'd be quite something. Let's go ahead and enter that melee and see how we do. We might need to swap out weapons depending on our opponent. No, I think we're going to stick with the sword. And let's get ready to strike. There we go. We had an opening. Oh, wow. One swift strike to the old man's head is enough to do it. And he drops down to the ground. Next up, we are fighting against our squire, Alan. Well, Alan, prepare yourselves. We can see that Bryden is also fighting and has actually won a fight. Sir Roger Manning has also won a fight. And Alan has won a fight as well. I wonder if Alan faced off against Cargyle. The Battle of the Alan. Alan Ball. Yeah. <laughs> Let's enter the melee for now and hope that we do not lose to our squire. Raywin, steady yourself and be ready. Get ready to strike. Wait for an opening. Oh, you're, you're being semi-decent there, good sir. Okay, go for an overhead. There we go. Your shield can only last for so long. The armor is holding, and that is two wins for us. Sir Roger Manning is doing pretty decent, and we're up against Alan Cargyle next. Alan. Alan Cargyle. All right. Well, our competition is Roger down here. Let's see if we can get ourselves another win. Let's enter the melee. Alan, get yourself ready. That helmet of yours is going to be decent. 
come on. It's an even fight so far. There we go. We got some damage. That was our opening. Just don't stumble. There we go. Well, compared to the fight that we had in King's Landing, our, our opponents have been a little easier going. Oh, Garrett. We have an archer who has entered the tournament, and Garrett unfortunately hasn't done all that well. Yeah, the poor bastard. And Roger Manning is keeping up with us. Zero losses, three wins. Okay, Garrett, you're up next. We seem to be working our way down the, the line here. So I'm thinking after Garrett, we're going to be fighting uh, Bryden, who has 1-1. And then we have Jasper Rivers as well here, who is doing okay, our new recruit. Two wins, one loss. Let's enter the melee against Garrett, and we'll see how we fare against an archer. I mean, our shield is pretty big, so we just need to close the ground. Here we go. Getting those first few hits. Here we go. And done. The Iron Crab wins yet again, and we are actually in the lead in this tournament. We are winning. We are four ahead, and Roger Manning has lost, and we're up against Raiden now. Let's enter the melee. Thankfully, there aren't that many lords here, so it's meant that we are fighting, predominantly, some of our own folks more often than not. And I'd like to think that we haven't fixed this so much as we're just more than capable to take down our bodyguards. Five wins. We are definitely on top. <laughs> we get a chance to test them out. Sir Jasper on guard. He's had three losses, so he hasn't been doing as well as some of the others. Oh, the poor bastard doesn't have a shield. How have you been fighting in tournaments so far then, hmm? Your sword does seem somewhat decent. Is it an arming sword? Yeah, it is. The same as ours. And uh, finally, we're up against Sir Roger Manning, who seems to be the real test here. Although in saying that, I'm also very impressed with how Alan has done so far. As a squire, he's actually pretty damn decent. Four wins, two losses. That is the same as Sir Roger Manning here. Okay, let's prepare ourselves into the melee. I almost figure that um, they just weren't prepared for us to turn up. They thought they just had this in the bag. But then this, this group of mercenaries turns up. Oh dear, that's not good. Oh, yes, but just enough crushing blow to the head. Let's see. The melee has ended, and with seven wins, zero losses, we are the champion. Fantastic. Victory is yours. As the crowd erupts in applause, you are led towards the ruler of the salt pans, who congratulates you on your victory, handing you your reward, a finely decorated helmet. In addition to honor, fame, and glory, we also earn the prize of 200 coins. Moreover, we earn 1300 from the clever bets that we placed on ourselves. Yes, I am happy about that. Let's see if we can make our way into the castle here and see if we can talk to any of the any of the lords. Hmm, there is just Sir Quincy Cox here, who we actually did fight in battle. Let's see if we can have a quick talk with him. Do, do I know you? Um, I am Raywin Keltiger, the Iron Crab. I fought you out there. Ah, yes, my head is still somewhat uh, thrown about. I am Sir Quincy Cox, as I'm sure you'd aware, a vassal of the Riverlands. I have heard much of you and your exploits, King's Landing. Now, oh, I perhaps should have known better than to challenge you in combat. But it is good to make your acquaintance all the same. And I yours. I will beg my leave for now. Lord Cox? Farewell, my lady. I shall remain your most ardent admirer. Well, we have ourselves an ardent admirer. We'll take that for now. Septon, we'll be on our way. Let's see what this helmet is like. The helmet that we received from winning the tournament in Salt Pans. I am damn happy with that. I was not expecting that. And we have ourselves a sellet. 51. Very nice. We'll go ahead and clamp that on our head. 
And while it doesn't match the rest of our armor, it is going to keep us a lot safer. That's going to protect our head a lot. And we're going to do our good old trickle down. Alan, actually leveling up from that. Well, congratulations, my friend. You are making it. 19. Okay, we're getting you there slowly but surely. Your shield skill could probably go up a little bit, my friend. Let's do that. And we're going to get him decked out with some new armor. Having a look at Sir Jasper Rivers here, we can see that he actually has a Corsair. He has a horse. A decent horse at that. A horse that I would love to take from him. But it is more than likely a horse that he knows and cares for a decent amount. So, well, for now, you get to hold on to it. We won't take that from you. It is your own, but uh, there you, you'll be part of our cavalry from now on at this stage. We need to get you a shield still at some point, so hold on for now, Mr. Rivers. Well, with that victory, we are going to be leaving Salt Pans behind, continuing to ride on towards King's Landing, perhaps stopping off in Maidenpool along the way. But first of all, we have Lord Haraway's town. Let's go stop off there. We arrive at Lord Haraway's town. The river has overflown its banks and flooded the town. It seems that most of the inhabitants have fled to one of the nearby villages. Let us explore. They've left the place behind. It is indeed flooded, the trident, raising its waters. Claiming this place for now. Oh, and we have a level up. Lord Haraway's town lies close to the river, known as the Trident. It appears the recent heavy downpours have caused the river to overflow the banks. The town has been flooded as a result. There appears to be no sign of the inhabitants. They've probably moved further inland until the river recedes. Hmm. Let's carry on throughout. We have ourselves some meat. The wooden building appears to be a butcher's shop. There's no sign of the butcher, but a few slabs of dried meat hang from a primitive rafter outside the shop. Perhaps to show customers his wares. You see no reason not to claim them as your own, but as you get closer, you notice the meat is crawling with maggots. Yeah, we won't be touching that. We're going to continue on throughout the rest of this place. Cabbages. Hmm. The inhabitants appear to have left in a hurry. The streets are filled with various produce, most of it spoiled. We're not going to be able to use any of this at all. Let's head back down. We have a wagon. And it is filled with fruit and a sturdy looking chest. Well, don't mind if we do. The last thing left for us to explore. The chest here and a decent chest at that with a jar of spices oil and dyes and some salt to boot let's go collect all of that and be ready to move on to leave this place behind yes perhaps then maiden pool it is along the way it is getting ever closer towards home though i'm sure word will slowly start to spread from the salt pans and from King's Landing of a fighter going by the title of the Iron Crab. Surely that's got to make some folk a little, I don't know, crabby. And here we have arrived at Maidenpool. Let's have a look at the outside of the place before we duck into the tavern to see if there are any intriguing folks that we might be able to bring on. Maidenpool, like some of the other places around here, is decently sized. We have a number of bridges along the way, although it looks like most of the water here is out. Looks like it could have actually been a small lake at one point that's just dried up. And we have some bones here, but they just seem like animal bones. Nothing too interesting. We could ride or run all the way up there. But we're not going to do that at the moment. You can see the mountains off in the distance here. And probably the river off in that direction. A really decent fortification. Let's head inside to see what we can find. Actually, market first. Let's go to the market to see if we can sell off some of these things. The oil sells for a decent amount here. And the spices, the same thing. Don't know what the actual pricing would be of spices. But I'm happy with that as a profit. 
a pretty damn be decent profit. We can see that the merchant here is actually really well off, so maybe it might be worth trying to create something here. There's a lot of wool, and there's a lot of tools. So we might be able to do something with that. Perhaps we might be able to do some work here first to be able to convince them that we are legitimate. I mean, word is spreading of our deeds. We'll visit the tavern to start with and see what we can find. Just a free rider and some levies from the Riverlands. Florian, the tavern keeper. And upstairs, we have no one else. The place is empty, it would seem. Yes, we are alone, Ellen. For now. Looking good with that helm, buddy. It's keeping you very discreet. Yeah, we'll leave the place behind for now. Hmm. Into the Guildmaster we will go. Who do we have here? We have ourselves a Master Ralph. And Garrett has leveled up as well. Fantastic. Hello, stranger. You seem to be new to Maidenpool. I'm the Guildmaster of the town. Um, tell me, Guildmaster, do you happen to have any jobs that I might be able to accomplish for you? Actually, I was looking for someone to escort. No, no, I'm sorry. I can't escort. I can defend, I can go get, but I'm not going to travel with you. I'm sorry. Fine. It, it would be going to the Weeping Town. It's tempting. All right, fine. We'll escort your caravan, but I have conditions. I will see to their safety. You don't need to pay me, but I wish to open a business. Perhaps you might be able to assist me with that. Introduce me to the right people. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I can. Have a look, shall we? Yes, we shall. Let's see. They think kindly of us enough here, and with us, swearing, to see the safety of their caravan. Well, I think we can manage. I'm going to go through everything that is here to see what we can find it might be the most profitable business for us to have. And I'll be back in a moment. After looking at all of the different businesses that we could potentially have here, really none of them work for us at all. But at the very least, we have a little bit of work and we have a caravan here. They are following us. Good. As long as they can keep up pace, we can get them to the Weeping Town, where we began our journey back here. It's been a while since we've been there and I would be inclined to revisit the place. Perhaps we can potentially start a business there, but along the way, we are most certainly going to be stopping off in King's Landing to return news of this book, or the lack thereof. And before we go any further, we're going to do a quick little bit of leveling up here. We can see that Garrett Longley is looking better for it. We're going to go ahead. Well, your strength is actually pretty damn good. We're going to keep on increasing your agility, though. His power draw is as high as we're going to be able to get it. But we can start increasing some other skills for them. Hmm. Really, with your agility, we might be able to potentially level up something else. Foraging being a skill that I could see someone, an archer, being pretty decent at. Horse archery might not be too terrible for us to get for you. But right now, riding isn't something that many of us are going to be doing. Uh, we're going to go with foraging for now, my friend. And we're going to keep on increasing your skill with the bow. And as for Rabin, we have another point to spend. And where's that point going to go? Well, I think increasing our charisma further, getting a higher leadership is always going to be better for us. However, at the moment, it looks like we can't put any points into leadership. We could look at some other directions. I would like to get her intelligence to 10 eventually so that she can read books, which means that we could have some points in trainer for her. You know what? We're going to start picking some of those up now so that those levies that we have won't need to just go into combat and die to get experience. But we've made it back here and Tywin is here as well, interestingly enough. Hmm. For the time being, we're going to go to Coppersmith's Wind. And we're going to visit Melko's bookstore, something that we can do twice, which is interesting. And hopefully something that we aren't going to break. Malco, Yes? Ah, he doesn't seem to want to talk to us. Let's go to the second Malco's store. What about here? Ah, Raymond Keltica. Uh, tell me, did you, did you find the book? 
I did not. Ah, uh, tis a shame. Just a rumor, then. N nothing to it? <laughs> I hear all kinds of stories. Most of them are true. You wouldn't believe the nonsense tales that originate in remote hamlets. I, I did hear of a fragment of the book. You did? Oh, tell me more. A maester found a clue, or a slither of notes pertaining to it. I, I tried to find where it was, but all I found was a crazed man who had sacrificed to an old tree. He had written a name on a stone. YGG. It was with the blood of one of his victims. Why GG, you say? How quaint. The Ironborn tell tales of how their legendary ruler, the Grey King, carved the first longship from a tree called YGG, Yig. Hmm. Supposedly, a demon lived in that tree. A demon with the power of foresight. Anyone who had their future told by Yig would inevitably meet with tragedy. Ying always chose to tell the future in a way that would cause the most pain to the world. Is, is that story true at all? Uh, not really. Uh, how could it be? A demon living inside a tree. Sounds like the mister you mentioned got caught up in some fancy tale of its own. But forget about that, Raven Keltica. At least you tried to find the book. That is worth a reward. Thank you, Malco. I don't suppose there's anything else I can do for you? Yes? I suppose not, then. Well, I will leave you for now. Thank you. And we shall leave indeed. Hmm. Interesting. And I believe at this stage that quest is all done and dusted. Yes, now we do need to continue on towards the Weeping Tower, but Tywin is here. Perhaps we could have a chat with him. I am still very tempted by this thick cuirass, though. It is rather affordable, considering the bonuses that we get from that. The only potential real negative is that it is Lannister-looking armor. I think we're going to bite the bullet on this one and purchase this thick cuirass. And there we are, looking much more regal and lion-like. We have quite a few of these coifs, probably too many. We'll go ahead and get rid of these two and just keep these three for the time being. We could sell off a little bit of the salt that's here. Hmm, yeah. Let's go offset that by a little bit. We'll keep one more of those in the bags of grain always useful to us. Oh, the pork is starting to smell. Well, let's hope that they can eat it before it goes off. <laughs> yes, we're definitely going to keep that and pass it on down. But that's looking a little bit more acceptable. We'll take it for now. Yes, I think we'll be able to stand up to our foes a little bit better. We will transfer that armor down to Alan and then to some of the others. But for now, we are going to go to the castle to see if we can have ourselves a meeting with Tywin. And I'm sure he would be enjoying how we are currently looking much more Lannister-y. Mm. Lord Tywin? We meet again, Raven Keltiger. What is it? Um, I, I was hoping that, um... Do you have any tasks for me, my lord? I need troops, properly trained. Six Westerlander sergeants. Bring them to me, and you will be rewarded for your service. Uh, I see. I'm sure I might be able to whip them into shape. Give me six fresh men, and I'll train them. To the best of my ability. Mm. You have taken a weight off my shoulders for now. I shall tell my sergeants to send you the recruits, and attach them to your command. Also, there is some funds in advance. There shall be more that follows. Thank you once again for your assistance. Thank you for your trust, my lord. Hmm. 
Training troops is never an easy task to achieve, as troops come and go and they do perish in battle. Lucky we have Bryden to help keep some of them alive and ticking. We'll hope that we'll be able to keep that up for now. But let us leave King's Landing behind. We need to continue on towards the Weeping Town, transferring armor down to the rest of our troops and making our way all the way across towards it. Let's begin that ride. And so, interestingly enough, we have set sail from King's Landing to make our way around to the port of the Weeping Town. It is going to take us a while to get round here. Our speed is not going to be massive, and you can see that we lose 30 coins every wee while, and we also lose morale. We don't want to be at sea for too long. It looks like we're actually getting off here. Just an interesting note. We are now in the Stormlands. It's gotten us around. And finally, we've seen as we're back on solid ground, our men feel better. But looking at our party, the morale is still excellent. So overall, we are looking okay to continue on towards the Weeping Town. Ah, and we are close. And Garrett has piped up. I can see the mountains. We must be getting close. That's my home. Well, tell me more, won't you? I, I'm from a small village, close to Horn Hill. You know the saying, Craven. Barley grown in Horn Hill is made into ale in Old Town, and we're all better for it. Not sure exactly what that means, Raven, but it's true about the barley and wheat and the oats. We grow more grain here in the shadow of the Tarleys, and the rest of Westeros put together, and our ale is the best too. You can see it in the soil here, rich and black, smells of good harvests and full bellies. Truth be told, I can't quite remember why I left in the first place. <laughs> well, of course I can. The whores in this part, they're old, wrinkly, and they're cut. That's probably enough for now, Garrett. As I told you, Raywood, the land is old, and many of the sayings are older still. I never understood half of what my father told me, and I suspect that neither did he. Well, thank you, Garrett, for your wonderful tales. We, thankfully, with our merchant caravan, have made it back here, or made it to the Stormlands. Let's wait for them to arrive, and surely we're close enough now at this point. We've heard that a short while ago, some travelers on the road from Pennyfield were attacked by broken men. We'd like you to track down these broken men. The merchants have got a description of them. Think you can do it? Aye, I can do it. We'll take care of them. Make sure there's none left. Well, we'll definitely do that. And we'll wait to see if this caravan is going to decide to arrive or not. We might just have to ride around in these parts a little bit before they decide to actually call it quits here. Hey! Finally, there we go. We just needed to talk to them yet again. Well, we've made it to the Weeping Town. We can cover the rest ourselves. Here's a little extra. 147 for escorting us. Good luck to you. Well, thank you very much. Well, now that that's complete, we can try and complete the rest here. Tracking down bandits. Hmm. They attack travelers near the Weeping Town, so they must be around here somewhere. We do have some honorable men that are patrolling the nearby area. But broken men could be anywhere. Let's hope that they can track them down. We have villagers. We'll start riding amongst the trees here and see if we can see anything. Ah, there we go. We have some broken men, Stormlanders, and they have some prisoners. Let's see if we can track them down. Are they going to run from us? Oh, possibly, but first of all, we discover a beggar and his daughter on the road. They look hungry. We'll give them 200 coins. We gain honor. Well, that's something. It's not always easy to gain honor in this, and we actually did lose some honor when we, well, assassinated one of the members of House Dark. Let's see if we can run them down. It's not going to be easy. We're going to see if we can cut them off here, stop them from traveling south. We're heading out into the peninsula at this stage, following them throughout the forest, past the villages, and come on, there we go. On the shoreline, we find them. This must be your unlucky day, mate. We're just about the worst people you could run into in these parts. <laughs> For me, you're nothing more than walking money bags. 
merchant to the weeping town offered me good money for your heads, and so I'll be claiming them, if you don't mind. A bounty hunter? Well, the killer! Kill her now! You can certainly try. You can certainly try. For now, we're going to get our lot to stay back here. Cavalry. Mr. Rivers, you can wait over here. And let's see if we can crest this hill, give our archers a chance. And it looks like we can. Inventory, get right out in front. And archers, we're going to have you hold here. The archers are already firing at them. Oh, no, we do not want to retreat across the way. Excellent. Hmm. And it appears that they have a few archers of their own. Why is our infantry not moving up yet? It is a mystery. Go on, you lot. We love the shields. They're very good. Ah, uh, you might actually still be included in infantry, even in your uh, cavalry. Hold down here. Unfortunately, most of our troops actually don't have shields. Hmm. Our options aren't great. We could continue to just transfer arrows, but I think it's going to be worth sending the infantry in. I want you to charge. Charge infantry, and our archers are going to hold up here on this hill still. It's the only way we can actually give them a chance to make it through this encounter. Otherwise, those levies are just going to get picked off one by one. We want our support support to stay back, though. I don't think we have anyone in support at this stage, actually. Hmm. We've got some falling. Chase down those archers. Get to them quick. Alright. Well, his horse is still alive, but that means that Rivers has fallen. We've caught up to some of them, but the majority of them have carried on past across the river. Hoping to use it to slow us down. We need to put a stop to them. Sooner rather than later. On we go, troops. Follow them into the woods. Damn. They certainly have the advantage here. We're going to keep on running them down. Onwards. Don't stop now. Come on. Keep the shields up. They can only run so far back. Eventually, they're going to need to stop. Keep on moving forward. Damn it. We're losing more of our men than I would like. This is a costly exchange. Alright. Looks like they're finally starting to fight back. Come on. Oh, falling down's not good. Oh, right in the head. That's unfortunate, but our helmet kept us safe. Come on. Come on. One more. There he is. Can't see him. Sneaky bugger. I can only hope that most of our troops are just injured. Not actually did this. Quite a few of them over there. Well, it's all our archers. Six killed, 13 wounded. A very costly exchange. We're not going to take any of the peasants on. And our men have leveled up. Ah, shared loot with them. We'll take a lot, but that was definitely a costly exchange. We're on 24. We're going to have to rest up, and we're going to go level them up. We have one elite Westland troop. We need to keep you alive. We can turn you into a sergeant afterwards. We need six of them. That's why doing this for Tywin isn't going to be so easy. Yeah, it's going to be a task, but one I think that we will achieve eventually. With the setting sun, we have made it back to the Weeping Town. Are we going to return to that guildmaster for our reward? A reward that we are in need of. We're going to take that gold and that experience. That is impressive. 
We've gained renown as well, and our relation here has improved. Well, it sounds like you're able to track down those bandits and show them what happens to those who would disrupt the flow of commerce here. We're going to take a time to recover, but perhaps you have another job. Something else we can do. Well, we were after some ale. Uh, someone to deliver it. Perhaps you can. We're looking to send it to Lorath. Too far. We need to rest. But thank you for the offer all the same. Let's just wait here for a while. Recover. Lick our wounds. And perhaps I'll even see if we can start a business here. We are splitting our businesses up between places. It sometimes can work out. Sometimes it can be unfortunate. Really, uh, some decent places for us to start business would be in Essos, but we're not looking to move back there anytime soon, not just yet. But come the morning, we should be fully recovered, and we even have some troops who are done training. Early morning, let's go ahead, take a step outside and see how they're looking. Everyone is fully recovered, fantastic, and we are going to go and get some more men-at-arms. Yeah, it's going to take a few more battles before we're able to get there. Let's go ahead and boost up that charisma, and thankfully, we can put a point in leadership. I am happy about that. We'll take it. Raywin, Raywin's looking good. Yeah, I'm liking, I'm liking the mixture of what she's got on at the moment. It's working out for her. But guys and gals, that is where we're going to be wrapping up today's episode. We have achieved much. We lost a tawny, and then we won a tawny. Our renown is starting to grow. We're getting much more better known, actually. Yeah, with 200 renown, Raywin Keltiga is becoming decently known throughout the land. Perhaps too well known. Only time will tell. The past few days were days of defeat and triumph. The smaller tournament setting of the salt pans was much better suited to Raywin's liking. However, facing the howl in a melee was a fate she never could have foresaw. In the end, it was not her that fought the hound, but rather the Iron Crab. The two, however, were one in the same, and as more in the aristocracy made the connection, questions would arise. The daughter of the Celticus, serving Tywin Lannister, every action has a reaction, and for Raywin, the strands of fate were set to converge. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Raven's Tale. If you don't know it already, you can pick up the very first piece of Rikon Roleplay's merchandise featuring Leonidas Aventus, the Dragonborn himself. There will be more items added to the store in the coming months, all available at rikonroleplays.com slash store. And finally, I'd like to extend a great big thank you to the patrons who continue to make this content possible. 